Let us pray. Indeed, God, you love us more than we can imagine. And in Christ, you demonstrated how much you love. And through his death, we are redeemed. We want to thank you, Lord, for this new day in our lives. The second day in the year 2022, the first Sunday in this year where we are all gathered to worship you. We want to thank you, Lord, that you have taken us safely to cross the year 2021, and we have seen the beginning of this year. We ask of you to enable us to begin with you, that we are not going to move an inch without your presence, that in this year we shall walk with you side by side, so that you may make us a blessing to the landscape of this nation and beyond. And now speak to us your word, the word of life. Renew our spirits, deepen our faith, increase, O oh God, your presence in us, that we can be able to speak about you more than we have ever spoken about you before. For this is our prayer, trusting and believing in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Please let us be seated. I take this opportunity to really thank God for each one of us for this uh, day that we have all gathered here to worship. And thank you, the vicar of the parish, Venerable Joyce, and your team of leadership, clergy, and the laity for organizing uh, that we all gather here this first Sunday of the year 2022. When uh, I was uh, looking at how uh, we will begin the year, and uh, I did uh, mention to Joyce that because I have been in the cathedral on 25th, and uh, yesterday, the first, I would like uh, to begin the first Sunday here at St. Francis. So we began to have uh, the imagination of this day. But this day also witnessed the uh, 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 confirmation of a number of candidates also have been prepared, and I was told uh, they were not being able to be prepared uh, in our last confirmation because of uh, their time in school, and it was a great opportunity for us to do this as uh, they uh, go back, many of them, to school. We also uh, purpose that this day is a day we are going to pray for all our learners who are going back to school uh, the week that is beginning tomorrow uh, so that they go when we have already prayed for them and we are praying for all those who are here and those who are in the countryside uh, and uh, they will be uh, we will commission them to go as they go back to school, knowing how schools were look like when they were closing, many challenges, burning of schools and other atrocities that has happened, and we want to commit our institutions of learning to God and our learners as they go back to school. Today also we are joined by the Kubamba team who have been uh, working with me uh, across the nation with a, a ministry that God has enabled us to begin, uh, Awesome Teens Tour. And uh, we want to thank God for the Kubamba team, One Hope, and the Anglican Church of Kenya, for God has brought us together so that uh, we may minister to our young people in our schools. And uh, they have done a, a commendable and remarkable job last year. The results were amazing, uh, over 100 and uh, 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 40,000 uh, students gave their lives to Christ, and many, many more were reached uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the opportunity God has given us to go to the various schools that we are able to go across the country. Over 25 dioceses were visited, and many schools were reached. This morning, they were able to join us, and they led the... Uh, uh, the uh, worship uh, hour in the morning, and we want to thank God for, for their ministry. Uh, I just want to introduce at this juncture Njugush. Uh, we popularly know him as Njugush. Uh, this young man um, came to me, uh, I think, the year before last year, uh, and we bummed on each other even before that. But uh, he came and said, you know, there is something that God has put in his heart, that he, he wants to reach out to the young people in this country. Uh, and he needed a partner. And uh, he said, I've seen you. And uh, when I listened to him, and I also poured my heart, 
and my yearningness to see the young people change in this country, uh, God brought us together and uh, we reached out to One Hope and we began to assemble a team. He assembled a team and uh, I, I added a little bit of uh, the number. Uh, Wangalwa is with us, our director for education. He became their father uh, in the team. Uh, and together we have had this amazing ministry that we have been able to reach to many schools. And you can see uh, even how the service began at a very high note. Uh, and I knew some of our members of uh, St. Francis, when they were entering the church, they were asking themselves, is this St. Francis or is it another church? And I've seen our elders uh, all dancing, and uh, we can all dance to the Lord and uh, find some energy. You know, when this team came and uh, we asked ourselves, what, what is the Lord saying to us? And we all listened and we heard the Lord saying, go and reach out to young people in our schools because most of the time our children are in school, not with their parents, and not even in the churches because they are in boarding schools. And we have been to many, many boarding schools, some day schools uh, across the nation, and God has done miraculous uh, uh, signs. That team you see is a young team uh, made of young professionals. None of them is an idol. All these young people are graduates, uh, and they have uh, given themselves to the service of the Lord, and we want to thank God for, for the opportunity. I say to them, there is something I don't have, and there is something you don't have. So let us bring what you don't have and what I have together. I said, I have the infrastructure of the church, uh, I have dioceses, I have schools, but I don't have the language of the young people. And you do have the language of the young people. I don't have the energy uh, of the young people, but you do have the energy of the young people. Let us put them together and uh, we can fire it up. So with our father and the young team, we are seeing God doing amazing things. May God bless you and uh, they will continue uh, to be a blessing to this church. Actually, we are sensing that the Lord is doing a new thing. Today, my message will be a new thing. Uh, behold, uh, the new thing is happening. And uh, I'm sensing a revival. And the, the Lord is, is, is putting in our hearts that there, there's going to be a revival in Kenya. And the revival will come through the young people in the Anglican church. And uh, we, the, the landscape of this nation will not be the same again. Uh, because God is going to take charge and take control. And uh, uh, our church will be refreshed not only the Anglican Church, but the Church of Jesus Christ will be refreshed in the landscape of our nation. So today we shall also be, uh, you know, commissioning them again uh, to go and serve this uh, uh, year. We gave ourselves a period of three years, then we do an evaluation, and then we extend and see how God is going to expand us. But uh, already God is doing amazing things. Uh, I'm also privileged to have been joined today by my family, uh, Esther and our children are all here. I will ask them to stand. Uh, most of them are also learners, so they have also come to be prayed for when they are going back to school. So uh, that is the family of the Archbishop. We are all ten in number. Five men and five ladies. So we praise God for each one of them and we thank God and they are all here. So I want us to share God's message for the new year. And uh, the topic uh, of my sharing today is, Behold, I do a new thing. Behold, I do a new thing. And the Bible goes on in Isaiah 43, 16 to 21, and says, Are you not perceiving it? Are you not seeing it? Are you not experiencing it? Have you not seen it? Because the Lord is doing a new thing. The new year brings with it renewed joy. And we normally begin it by that greeting of new year, which I want to now take the opportunity to greet you. Happy new year. Happy new year. Praise the Lord. Happy new year again. Yes, the year 2022 is still fresh and new. Uh, we, we began yesterday uh, midnight as we are crossing over uh, the year 2021 and ushering in into the year 2022. We are grateful to God for allowing us to see yet another year. 
We praise him for his mercies. We praise him for his uh, glorious love that uh, we cannot even express and tell enough about his love. We thank him for safekeeping. We thank him for enabling us to go through that hard year 2021 because of COVID-19. And uh, you know, we crossed 2020 in a very hard moment. Uh, and 2021 began with a heavy lockdown um, and, and another wave and another wave. Uh, and uh, it has been a very, very difficult year. We want to thank God for the opportunity of uh, remaining his church, even in that space where we were not gathering properly. We still remain his church. We thank God for uh, innovation and technology that has enabled us to reach out, that uh, we were able to uh, experience a lockdown, but the church was not locked down because technology has enabled us to re be with each other uh, electronically uh, and reach out. And therefore, as we end 2021 and begin 2022, we must have a moment of deep re reflection on what it means to end one thing and to begin another. Endings are important, but beginnings are amazing. So sometimes the Bible teaches us the ending of a matter is better than even its beginning. But uh, although endings are important, Beginnings are also amazing because beginnings usher in new opportunities. They provide new opportunities, new and greater assignments, new aspirations. Uh, God in his abundance masses gives us innumerable opportunities for new beginnings. Lamentation chapter 3, verse 22 and 23 says, The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His masses never come to an end. And the singer sang this song, his love never runs out on us. It is always new and fresh every morning. The Bible goes on to say his mercies are new every day. So this is a God of renewal, that there is nothing of old in him. He is renewed every day and his mercies are renewed every day. His love is renewed every day. They are new mornings. And we can all join and say, great is thy faithfulness. Through the Bible, God has promised to provide new strength, new courage, peace, impetus uh, to those who trust him and hope in him. And therefore, the book of Isaiah uh, tells us this uh, great theme, behold, I'm doing a new thing. Behold, I am doing a new thing as, as a theme that runs through uh, the entire prophecy of Isaiah. In the beginning of Isaiah, Isaiah talks of judgment, God judging a nation that have gone astray from his will. He speaks of them going into uh, captivity and exile. Uh, he speaks of them, uh, you know, being in a desolate place. In the first book of Isaiah, which is Isaiah chapter 1 to 39, it's all about judgment, but still in that section in chapter 9, there is a beginning of the prophecies of a Messiah, that God is going to renew things through a Messiah. God is going to bring, uh, to bring new things through um, what is going to do afresh. Uh, and the, the prophet Isaiah was not just giving them hope of uh, liberation from the current exile that Israel was facing, but giving them hope of a relationship that God is going to establish uh, for eternity through a Messiah. And the Messiah was depicted as a suffering servant. And the second book, which is uh, chapter 40 to chapter 66, speaks of God's words of comfort. Comfort, comfort my people for uh, the Messiah has come. Uh, the suffering servant uh, is coming to liberate his people and a new hope is going to be uh, uh, given. But in this particular chapter 43, the imagination is what humanity goes through. And uh, the imagination here is that humanity goes through painful moments and experiences, and they are likened to three things. 
to a desert and a desolate place where thirst rules and congas and the scorching heat and nothing grows properly to maturity in a desert place because there is no sufficient water to sustain. And this is where God says, I will walk you through, even in a desert place, I will make water and uh, available and everything will be refreshed. The jackals and the ostrich will have something to drink from. I will bring brooks and fountain of water in a desert place and refresh it. The other imagination God has uh, uh, in the suffering of his people are people going through fire. And he still promised them, even if you go through fire, I will be with you. And you're not going to be burned. You're not going to be consumed by any raging fire or, or of whatever magnitude in terms of intensity. The Bible also has the imagination of flooded rivers. And you can see how forceful flooded rivers are. It was just recently we saw Rivanziu in a Kitui County sweep a whole bus and exterminating many people's lives and uh, 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 completely ravaging um, the entire landscape around the river, the river banks because of the force of the water. The Bible says, even if you go through uh, raging waters and flooded rivers, I will be with you. You will go through it because I'll be with you. So the imagination here is people going through all kinds of pain that threaten life, and they are all life-threatening. The desert place is life-threatening. The flooding rivers are life-threatening. The fires are life-threatening. They can consume and they can completely uh, exterminate whatever comes closer to it. And this is a space in which God comes to Isaiah and says, Behold, I'm doing a new thing. I'm going to empower you. I'm going to empower you so that you can go through uh, flooded rivers and you're going to swim across. You're going to go through fire and you're going to emerge on the other side, not even burned, and you'll not even smell the burning of fire. I'm going to create waters in the, in the desert place and highways in the, in the sea because I'm going to change things. So when the Bible is saying the Lord is doing a new thing, the big question here is what is new? What is new? What is new is our big question as we usher the year 2022. What is new? In this portion of scripture, God is saying what is new is his presence. For in his presence, Israel is going to emerge victorious. What is new is his protective arm that is going to protect them anew that is going to show up. What is new is renewed relationships, that God is going to relate with his people in a renewed way. They are going to be his people, and he's going to be their God, and he's doing a new thing of establishing this relationship and cementing it so that nothing threatens the relationship between man and, uh, and his God. So the new thing is about renewed relationships. The new thing is a renewed hope. The children of Israel in that uh, state of devastation, uh, in suffering, in turmoil, in exile, have lost hope. And God is saying, I'm coming to do a new thing, to renew hope, to rejuvenate the landscape. If we look at our times and try to think what are we going through, we are not any different from the children of Israel. We may not be in captivity here in Kenya by any political oppressive regime or, or force or we are not under any foreign rule, but we are under captivity because of many other
But uh, discussing the topic, what is new? We are also always faced with two choices. Choice number one is choice to forget the old and the former things, or choice to keep the former things and the old and make it part of us even as we march into the future. So we have choices to make. And that's why the Bible says God is doing a new thing, so do not dwell on the past, do not remember the former things, nor consider things of old, because God is doing a new thing. The old that we are called to forget, if we choose to forget, is both the good and the bad. Sometimes the good old days have a tendency of dragging us and making us not to see the new possibilities that are in store for us. We can choose to remain in the good old days. And most of us parents, even when we remind our children of their future, we normally talk of our old good days. This is how we function. This is how we did things. This is how we, we looked at life ourselves. It is not bad to, to remember that. But we must also choose to look for the possibilities that the new present to us because we cannot go backward and live in those old uh, good days. They can also deny us the chance to reach out to new horizons and higher goals. And it can make us contented because we are contented with the old good days. And most of us are there. We are contented with the old good days and we think there is nothing much more I can do from what I'm already doing. I can only continue to do what I'm already doing, and it can keep us in that space for long. If you are preoccupied with the old good days, let us also remember that we cannot go back there. They are past, but there are new opportunities. There are greater possibilities. There is something still new in store for us, and we cannot grab it if we remain in the old good days. We can also choose to remain in the bad that we have experienced in the past. So the bad as well has the potential to make us to stick to the pain of yesteryears, the failures and disappointments, that we can still remain in that area that I have failed and you refuse to move and you know that there will be success even after failure. Or you can choose to remain in your past disappointments and continue to be disappointed and disappoint yourself even in the future. So we can either choose to be caught up in the pain and failures of yesteryears or choose to learn from them and move on to the new God is doing and the new God is performing today. So when the word, uh, the word of God tells us we have to forget the former things, it is a form of things that we have done that can weigh us down and limit us from forging into the future. The word forget, as used in this context, does not necessarily mean erasing from the mind. It means choosing not to be tied down by those happenings. Yes, we can still remember them. It doesn't mean we erase them from the mind, but we must refuse to be tied by them as we move into the new. God is calling the Israelite, was calling the Israelites not to be preoccupied by the victories of yesteryears, even when they were conquering Palestine. That excitement of the conquest can uh, uh, limit them into that space, and they fail to see the possibilities God is putting in front of them. Or they can choose to live in the deliverance from Egypt, and they kept on reminding themselves when we are delivered from Egypt, when God was with us in the desert place, and we are led into this place. But when they reached Canaan, they forgot about that. And they were tied those all, all good days, and they forgot to move with God in the new spaces God has created for them. God is reminding us not to be caught up in the challenges or victories of yesteryears. But we must forget what is paining us and choose to leave that which is limiting us so that we can appreciate the new spaces God is creating 
an opening in front of us. The next choice you can choose to make is to see the new. The Bible is reminding us, don't you perceive it? Don't you realize it? Are you not experienced the new thing I'm doing? Do you not see it? And to experience the new, the Israelites were not only called to forget the old former days, but also to behold the new as well. To behold is to cherish, to love, to be connected to. Behold, I am doing a new thing is to identify with the new, to see yourself in the new, to move into the new and to be part of the new. The picture of the new Exodus for a people once again oppressed as Israelites who are in exile, a second liberation is what they are crying for. A second exodus out of captivity in, in Babylon is what they are crying for. But in Isaiah, the prophet is not only talking of uh, the next exodus from exile, he's talking of salvation through our Messiah into the eternal spaces of our God. Into the eternal spaces of our God. So the past miracles were nothing compared to what God will do to his people in the future. To experience the new, God invites us to see it, to behold it, to be part of it, to experience it. This demands that we create a new vision, a new imagination, a better and a bigger tomorrow. Normally, as we usher in the new year, people make promises and they make what they call New Year resolutions. That this new year, this is going to be my vision, this is going to be my imagination. This is what I want to plan myself, but we normally forget after the first 10 days. Are you like me? We normally forget after the first 10 days, isn't it? We make good resolution, but after a few days, everything is forgotten, and we go back to the old. We go back to what we are used to. We, we continue to do what we have already, already experienced doing it, even in the past year. So as we look into the distant future, what are you seeing? What is your personal, family, career, or Christian vision? Do you have one? What is your New Year challenge? How do you plan to overcome that challenge? What are you developing as your imagination? What are you matching with? Do you have the sense that God has already a focus and a vision for you? And God envisaged that we want to relate with you in eternity. Is your vision part of that reality and relationship God wants you to have with Him? Is it part of our vision that I want to have a more and a deeper relationship with Him this year? And as a Christian, as we usher in the new year, what is our purpose for this year? How can we harness? How can we put ourselves into that space? When I was reflecting yesterday and today, one thing I'm asking God as a person is, let me be more faithful to you this year. Let me be more committed to your cause this year. Let me pursue more of your will this year. Let me see you more of your presence around me this year. I want to trust you more and have a deeper relationship with you. For when we begin with him, everything else becomes easier. In this electioneering year, what are we seeing? Is there hope for this nation? What are we seeing? We must begin with God and trust in Him. But we must participate and choose as a church to be the people to endear the entire nation to a loving nation, to a peaceful nation, to a united nation, so that it is us in the church who will shun tribalism and hatred. It is us of the church who will show people how to love and care for each other. We must choose to see the new thing God is doing. And God is saying, I want to love you more. 
I want to be connected with you more. The reading of the New Testament, particularly the Gospel of John chapter 1, the writer again sent us to the beginning. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was God, and through Him all things were created. Through the Word, God made things new. Through His Word, things are created. Through His Word, things are made possible. Through His Word, there is renewal. Through the Word, there is refreshment. And the new, in that portion of Scripture, God is saying, the light has shone into a dark, a dark world full of sin and darkness. And this is the light of Christ. And this light brings life in it. So the new thing is that the light of Christ brings life to a lifeless world, to a dying world, to a decaying world because of sin. And the freshness of the light of Christ being renewal. So when we are asking ourselves what is new this year, we can answer the light of Christ. The question is, do we bear that light? Is it part of me? Has it illuminated in my heart? Am I forgiven? Am I changed? Am I a daughter and a son of God who has the light? And will this light illuminate my heart so that I share the light with others? So the Bible is calling us to join the new God's doing. And the new is the light has come. And whoever believes and trusts in the light will be made a child of God. That is John chapter 1 verse 12. Whoever believes in him and trusts in the light becomes a child of God. So are we going to become children of God more this year? For when we become, we become the light this nation requires. And when you shine, wherever you are, whether in school, at home, in your place of work, and you allow the light of Christ to shine, it will dispel darkness from around us. Amen? And darkness is hatred, darkness is jealousy, darkness is every form of sin, darkness is stealing, darkness is all that is not right in the landscape. Suppose every Christian in this nation, and we call ourselves 80% Christians, shine the light of Christ. Are we going to fight for election 2022? No. Why? The light of Christ has shone upon us. And that light does not bring death, it brings life. For the light brings life, not death. As we cross over into the new year, we are being reminded the greatest a uh, new thing God has done and is doing is establishing this relationship to a Savior, Jesus Christ. I was reading a book by two men, Philip Morrison and Han Hankuri Guy. The, the book is, uh, the title of the book is Influence, Leading Without Position. Influence means leading without position. And these two men quoting Oswald Chambers say, the main thing about Christianity is not the work we do. The main thing about Christianity is not what we do every day, but the relationship we maintain and the atmosphere produced by those relationships. Christianity is all about relationships. God relating with us and us relating with each other in a Christian atmosphere where love is the governing principle. He goes on to say, naturally, your relationship with God involves spending time with Him, listening to Him speak in the Bible, and prayer, and experiencing, expressing yourself to Him through prayer. It also involves honoring Him by following His direction and obeying His command. So the only way to honor God is to follow His direction and obey His commands. To follow Christ or be a follower of Christ, what does it mean? What does it mean? If that's going to be the new thing for you this year, 
If you are going to make your resolve this year that I'm going to follow Christ more and become more like him, what does it mean? To follow Christ means to learn from him, build, trust in him, believe in him wholeheartedly, and believe and trust in his word, and live by his word, obey his commands. That's what it means to be godly. That's what it means to be a Christian. That's what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ. To be uh, influenced by Christ's teaching and teach others, we must be persuaded, persuaded fully that it is the right way, the right path to follow. We are gathered here this new year where God is inviting us to make our single number one an all-time resolution as a resolution to follow Christ and to believe in Him and trust in Him. Influence is not so much through authority or power or to enforce or by force. Through persuasion, persuasion is more by what we demonstrate, by doing it. Jesus demonstrated to his disciples how to be a true follower of God. He prayed to God more in life. He spoke about the kingdom. He invited them into the kingdom. He spoke about the Father. He demonstrated the love of the Father. He did not just speak about it in parables, but he showed in his entire life and demonstrated the greatest love by dying on the cross for us who owe him everything. He took our place and our sins are atoned for. We are redeemed and delivered because Christ paid the price. Jesus changed the disciples' hearts and their followers freely by inviting them and teaching them to obey. As Christians, we must change people's hearts not by force, but by influence until they change their behavior. If you listen to the stories of these young people who are in the Mubamba team and they share their stories and testimonies to the young people in schools, all what they do is to demonstrate hearts changed by God. They were not by any standard in any good. None of us is. I included. None of us has been good by any standard, but by the grace of God, we have been changed. And because we follow him freely, we become changed agents. And therefore, we have been invited, because what God is doing new is in the business of changing people's hearts and drawing them to himself. We are called to join in and be participants. So even if one has a leadership position and power to influence this, uh, or to enforce this, influence produces more lasting and powerful uh, change than force. This was said by a man called Timothy Keller. So, whatever position we hold, or power, or authority, be it of the gun and other uh, representation of power, they cannot have lasting change in people's hearts. But when we influence, by demonstration and showing people the way, they will change freely. If you seek power before service, you will neither get power nor serve. If you seek to serve people more than gain power, you will not only serve people, you will also gain influence over them as Jesus did. I wish we have uh, enough of those who are aspiring to become leaders in this church today or they are watching us, or they are listening to this message, that actually we gain influence and power not by forcing ourselves into it, not by buying it through money or using any other form of manipulation. It is not the tricks that we normally see people use. We must begin by service. And the Bible says, if you seek power before you serve, you will neither get it and you cannot even serve. But if you seek service, even power and influence come because 
you'll become an influencer. Even if you have no position, you will still make things happen. A story of Toro was told of this school where the students were going on a rampage and the principal was trying to speak to them and they could not hear anything what the principal wanted to say. But one teacher who held no position is not ahead of any department. Just put his two hands up and went to the students and everybody went quiet. And people wanted to know why. Why did the students go quiet? And the story was told is because this man connected with every student. He became like a father to all of them. He listened to their stories. He counseled them. He walked with them. He was with them in the field. He listened to every of their worries and challenged them. And he was always walking with the students. Because of the influence he had, he had power more than the principal over the students. By putting his hands up, everybody went quiet. The principal of his power and influence and position could not change a thing. Connection and relationship does. Amen? So God is inviting us into this new thing called relationships. And relationship is governed by love. That we need to choose to love each other, to care for each other, to embrace each other, and to make each other our best friends. Power is therefore not based on physical intelligence, it's not based on socio-economic ability and capability, it's not based on military might or political superiority. Instead, power is expressed in service and weakness. Being vulnerable, reaching out to those who are low in society. Friends, when we do that, we will make the world a different place. Jesus did not come to take any political power. He did not amass any wealth. He was roving around like a weakling, somebody who is being fed by those who have food because he did not grow any farm. He had nothing to himself, no property attached, but he was able to change us by the power of his influence, the character of his spirit, the loving nature. And he went to the cross as the key suffering for his people. How I wish we who are in leadership become the best of servants so that our identity is no servanthood but not what can be attached to ourselves as belongings. May God help us to do the new thing, to join the new thing God is doing. So what is new? What is new, as I summarize, is what is written in John chapter 5. John chapter 5, verse 23 and 24. He who hears my word and obeys who has sent me has eternal life. He has crossed over from death to life. Amen? Tell your neighbor, the new thing is crossing over from death to life. And God is calling us today to cross over from death to life. The new thing God is doing and is just done through Jesus Christ is to give us the opportunity to cross over from death to life. The new thing that should happen to me and you this year, 2022, is the great crossover, crossover from death to life. When we do that by obeying Him, honoring Him, following Him, embracing Him, trusting Him, Building the relationships that will enable us to have influence over other God's people as light and we shine in the darkness, the Lord will bless our land. The Lord will bless you. The Lord will bless me. May His name be glorified. Amen. I'm not going to pray at this juncture because I want us to make a big prayer. And I want to invite the Kubama team to play a little skits just to show you, you know, where are we and which spaces do we occupy before Christ wins us over, before we cross over from death to life, so that we may pray.
for all our needs as we get into that season. So watch over that seat and we shall come back to make the great commitment and the prayer of this year.